I'll tell you something about the city SDK project. Maybe some of you heard about it, maybe most of, them, most of you didn't, um, but don't worry, I'll tell everything. Um, my name is uh, Bert Spaan, I'm the developer of Waag Society in Amsterdam. Um, Waag Society is a, an institute for art, science and technology. Um, we do many, many different projects, mostly somewhere involving arts, culture and technology. Um, we have artists in residence that try to think of concepts involving technology and which try to um, apply those innovations uh, in the real world. Um, we cooperate with cultural organizations, with public organizations, with cities, with governments. Um, but most of us are real technologists at heart, so there's lots of programmers working for us. And, um, I'm a developer myself, and also more and more we're doing big European projects, and of which City SDK is one. Um, <clears throat> City SDK is a European Union effort to um, standardize the way data is shared between cities in Europe. Um, now, if you want to develop an, an app or a web application or whatever, and it works in Amsterdam, it, it would never work in Rome or Helsinki or wherever. And, uh, the European Union notices that and wants to um, standardize APIs and data and uh, so it will make it easier for developers to to, work, to create something that works here and somewhere else too. Um, CDSDK um, is, um, is a cooperation between uh, eight cities and in every city there's two to four organizations working on the project. Um, so there's Amsterdam, there's Rome, uh, Helsinki Lamia, which is a tiny little town in Greece somewhere. Uh, Lisbon, Istanbul, Manchester, and Barcelona. Um, and there's three areas where CDSK focuses on tourism, participation, and mobility. Um, tourism could be anything from what, if, what events are in the city, what um, concerts are there, uh, are there places of interest, uh, restaurants, um, and <coughs> participation. Would be uh, like Open 311. So if there's something fix my, fix my street kind of project, but then Europe. And Bath Society in Amsterdam, we are re responsible for the mobility part. Um, and I'll talk more about that, about that later. Um, we at the Bath Society usually work with organizing workshops for the different um, elements and try to find what is important uh, for the different aspects of the project. So we've worked first with all the partners of all the eight cities um, to, to, to see what uh, data is available in every city. Uh, we, we've tried to explore differences in the culture. Of course, uh, mobility is something else in Istanbul as it is in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam, everybody would take the bike, while in Istanbul, I'm sure people wouldn't. Um, we've organized a workshop for users. So, Citizens, citizens and commuters to see what they find important when they are traveling through urban areas, through cities. Um, we've um, did some research there, and also <coughs> um, we organize workshops for developers um, to see what kind of technology they like to use. Um, what uh, and it turned out they um, what was, now it's always a big problem that if you find some data set in some city. It always is licensed, licensed in a different way than other data sets are. So um, we found that we really need to put effort in trying to open up more data and making sure that developers should never, should never worry about if the data is open or not and what are the circumstances for use. Um, the goals of the project. First of all, um, one goal is open up more data sets um, and try to find good standards for every data set. Um, there should, uh, an API should be developed uh, so that if you want to access mobility data in one city, you can do that in the same way in another city. And last of all, um, every, every of the three uh, areas, so tourism, mobility, and participation, uh, develops an app to test the API implementation and to uh, create the first opportunity for citizens to, to use the data, to use the app. Um, well, um, we started by investigating 
in Amsterdam what data sets are available. Uh, we are focusing on public transport and traffic information uh, and we of course found out directly that there's, in Amsterdam there's lots of data available but all that data is organized in different formats, some with geolocation, some even without, um, but then they would have an address which would get the geocode. But um, we found it, well this is just an example of the file we found that we could use. So it wasn't at all easy to, 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 to start. Um, they do share one property, usually location, but um, uh, in, on the Innovation Festival last September, we've uh, created an installation to, to show all the data sets that we found about Amsterdam. So this is how it looked, and this is, for example, bike routes in Amsterdam. Well, not really important for uh, mobility, but if you like elm trees, New York. Um, <clears throat> public transport, uh, events, places where concerts or expositions, expositions are. Um, and this is a map of all the open data that we could find in Amsterdam. So there's lots of open data available, but it's all structured differently and not always too easy to access. Um, I'll get back to that later. For, then we asked ourselves the question, what mobility really is? Um, well, it's, of course, it's, it's people traveling along a route in the city usually. Uh, and what they need is information about that route. They want to know where they're going, what the schedule of the buses are, maybe what the weather is if you're walking or biking. You want to know if it's raining or it's going to rain. You want to know if the traffic jams or road construction work. Um, so, but also, what's really important, if <coughs> For example, you're uh, taking a, a, a traveling through the city, you want maybe want to know what other users are, are doing the same route so you can share information with them. Um, so you, you, if you would plan on a route on Google Maps, it would say, well, go to this tree, take the first left and the second right. For example, maybe you want to know with, uh, if you're traveling, that where, where you can get the best breakfast, or maybe you want to share that information. It's not always about uh, take the bus at three, three minutes past because when I'm at the train station I can find sometimes information myself. So it, it, it's much more than a uh, route planner that gives you the exact st uh, steps you want to do to, to get somewhere. Um, let's say this is a city. <coughs> and uh, so this, these are roads in the city and those are nodes. Uh, I think those are roads. Um, and about every part of the city there's data available. Maybe there is road construction work. Maybe there is a good coffee place. And maybe it's raining in that area, or there's something happening too. So it's all built uh, parts of data that are connected to points in the city. Um, suppose somebody's struggling this route, and somebody else is, is doing like this, and a third, pers third person is doing this route. Altogether, you can see that <coughs> the routes overlap, the data overlaps with the way they are traveling. Um, so wouldn't it be great if, uh, if you were, for example, would be the, the, the red guy? You can see that the blue user is somewhere there. Maybe he has something inter interesting to say about that very point. Or maybe it's raining there, and if you're leaving by bike, you want to know that beforehand, before you, you leave your house. <coughs> um, the problem is, um, all those data sets that we have explored, and many data sets that, that, that are available, like time schedules and uh, data sets with road construction work, they are about locations, but not about objects. Um, so, the only um, information that's then been given to us is that they are near to each other, so we know the distance between the data, but not really if they are about the same object. So we really need something that, that, that can put the data on an object, and those, those objects then have a geometry. But location itself isn't always too important, so we really need objects instead of locations. So we need a map, and of course, luckily, we have OpenStreetMap. Open um, good for us, it's, all the eight cities are perfectly covered. Um, all the data we need for mobility data is, is there. There's roads, railways, subways, uh, hiking trails, bus stops, uh, sometimes even complete bus routes. There's regions, the city of Amsterdam, is a, the, the neighborhoods are there. Uh, Everything we need for, for city SDK mobility is right in OpenStreetMap. So if only we could map all the data that we have on the, the right OpenStreetMap objects, we could then expose all the data via the OpenStreetMap objects to everybody else. And everybody else everybody would be talking about the same object, not only the same location, 
but the same object. So that's what we came up with, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, so the API that we're going to make is <clears throat> we have objects, map objects, roads, bus stations, buses, uh, bus stops, uh, tram tracks, everything, and we just add data to those objects in different layers. So there'll be a, a public transport layer, maybe there will be a road construction layer, a traffic jam layer. So you could search for the right information on the right uh, geographic area. Um, and users, and via the API, one could define routes across the map. So it, it could see if, if you do that route, if there's data uh, available that, that's, that's, um, that you need. Um, another aspect is of the API is to find good standards, uh, which we could combine with the student data. And of course, for public transport, GTFS is probably the way to go. Um, so, uh, the map of yes, those are just the standard OSM nodes, ways, and relations. Um, we also have the, and by the relations, we also have the, the regions and the neighborhoods. Um, and to each object in, the, in, in our graph, just any data can be added as a key value store. Um, that can be standard OpenStreetMap tags, or that can be GTFS data. But also crowdsourced information, like, well, there is a, a good bar here, or the coffee is not, not so good, but they have nice uh, granatic <coughs> uh, or anything else. And uh, by the layering system, we would, also, we would always have a, uh, you would all, uh, always know what the source of data is. Um, then, what is a route? Well, maybe a route is just a really detailed, detailed, detailed bike path. When you uh, say Google Maps, I want to go from here to here, it gives you the exact. Um, exact uh, path that you have to follow, but that, that's not always what you want. Sometimes it's just a, an array of bus stops and how the, the, the road goes between that. You don't really care because you know that you're going to go through the stops. Maybe um, you're traveling by car from city A to city B and you don't, I mean, maybe there's two highways, but it doesn't matter because for your route you just want to say oh, I'm falling off, uh, to the system that you're, um, uh, I'm with a car, I'm going from this city to this city and then you would have enough information to, to ask the system for uh, data that you would need. So it's not always uh, an exact route with exact streets. It can be um, more abstract than that. All right, so first difficult part is map all the data to OpenStreetMap objects. Uh, in Amsterdam, we're uh, working with the, 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 the city, uh, and they um, supply us with traffic speed for main arteries for the city, we know how fast the cars are driving there. And also we have all the data from, in Amsterdam, uh, schedules of the buses, but also real-time information. And um, I'll show you the first endeavors in, oh, where's my mouse look? There it is. Um, try to map that on the data. <coughs> oh, that didn't, didn't work at all. Why not? Right, Amsterdam, um, blue is the data from the, the city. Uh, looks perfectly organized, but when you zoom in, you'll soon see. <coughs> is this because my internet connection is not working? Uh, yeah, maybe it's 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, the 10 minutes. Uh, oh, no, it's back. Yeah, well, this is the, this not the, I need the tiles too. The, <laughs> Is there a secret little trick that I can do so I can get an extra <coughs> Oh, fuck. city is very messy. It's almost close to the route. 
to the roads, but not exactly. It has weird little corners. It, it's, it's, it doesn't map perfectly. So we need to map this to the underlying upper street map. Well, of course, you can do it really easily. Just filter by uh, the property's road type and from distance, and you do this. Well, it's close, close enough. You can filter out everything that's as a mean distance that's too big. So this is what you have, uh, are left with. The next step, I didn't have time to do that yet, but I'll just import all those uh, lines that you get now into some graphing algorithm and try to find the, 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 the longest connecting things through the whole uh, area. So then I think I'll end up with something useful and I can map the, the real-time um, traffic speed data to the, the very OpenStreetMap objects. So this is um, traffic speed. Then there is, this is um, public transport stops in the old Netherlands. Uh, let me see, I think uh, purple is OpenStreetMap and Light blue is GTFS. <coughs> so there is areas in Holland where the um, public transport agencies didn't open up their data yet, so that would be the, the very least country. And there is parts of the country where OpenStreetMap is not really up to date. Um, but the areas where they overlap with this color, so you can, you can see that you in most areas um, there are OpenStreetMap bus stops where there are also GTFS bus stops. And I'll zoom in somewhere here. <coughs> so what we need to do is find those clusters and add GTFS data to the, uh, to the corresponding OpenStreetMap point. Or if there is no OpenStreetMap object, create a new one um, and add the GTFS data to that point. Back to the presentation. <coughs> um, yeah, so we are also developing um, algorithms which make make it for developers easier to map their data to OpenStreetMap objects. Um, there's more data to map. Um, there's also routes in GTFS which we can map to the, the, the backup layer. Maybe users are generating routes or want to import routes in the system, like KML, GPX, or if you, for example, uh, use the Google directions to create a route, maybe you want to use that route in our system. Or you can, if we have our algorithm ready, so you can import KML into our system, and our system will try to, try to find a kind of OpenStreetMap route corresponding to your um, KML file. And there's more data sets that we are um, trying to look into, like, uh, now, that's why I use always the rainfall router, so that you can see if it's going to rain in two hours or not. Um, the city is always also trying to open up their parking, real-time parking information. But anything else really that you want to import in City SDK, you could. Um, we have started doing the API, <coughs> and here are some random queries that I can do. Uh, like give me all bike routes in the Netherlands. This is a really long one. Uh, and so those are all the IDs of the CDSK nodes that go from two OpenStreetMap objects. Uh, so you would find <coughs> um, an object with OpenStreetMap data. Um, what you also could do is find OpenStreetMap nodes that have GTFS data mapped to them. So you would find OpenStreetMap objects with both GTFS data here and also OpenStreetMap data. So the system has then found uh, a bus stop that has that is close enough to a GTFS stop, so it knows it's it's supposed to be the same. Um, what else could I do? Well, those are not too exciting. <coughs> um, and then to the app that we are making. Um, we are developing a, an app which uses all of, all of the functionality of the API. It will be a mobile travel assistant which will run on your mobile phone. So if you leave it tomorrow in the morning, uh, it knows the routes that you're usually are doing and it tries to find information uh, according to that route and the time and the, the way of transport. So it 
the app knows that you're going to go biking, so it knows that web information is important, and it knows the route that you're going to do, so it tries to find information fitting to that uh, very route at that very moment. <coughs> it does not plan a route. Maybe somebody else can use our API and our data to make a route planner to that data, but that's not our plan. Um, but it helps you to find useful information for routes you already know. And we want to um, use crowdsourcing uh, in the app, so you can say, well, the train company says the train has delay in five minutes, but I'm here at the station and I, I can see with my own eyes that it has a much longer delay. So things like that, and you can then comment on that information. Um, so this is a scenario. Uh, those are lovely employees of the Vast Society. Um, so this is Marisa, and uh, she's using the app in the morning. This is Holland, she lives in Leiden, she wants to go to Amsterdam. Uh, a colleague of mine and of Marisa's. Um, also live in Leiden, who also wants to go to Amsterdam, and another friendly guy. Um, but then comes in a message from the train company said, saying the, the train might have delayed five minutes. <coughs> and the yep. then responds, then back responds. So this is a bit like the Apple way group uh, will work. And maybe in the end, this will be the Netherlands with uh, crowdsourced data and open data that we map on that. Um, we've started with the app. It looks a bit like this, not at all finished, but... <clears throat> um, of course, it will be really difficult to, to, to find relevant data to a route. Um, the system has to know uh, your preferences, the way you travel, your, uh, the way you never travel. Maybe you never want to take a taxi, or never want to take a subway. Um, it has to find, for, the, for that every time, that, Right information, for example, here. Um, if you're in a bus and <coughs> traffic jam information or overlaps with the, with the guy that takes, the, takes the, the car, but maybe if you want to take, take a bike, something there happens that's only relevant for bike travelers, but it's not relevant for bus and car travelers. So it will be difficult to, to calculate overlap in much more than only geospatial terms, but also in preferences and methods of transportation and time and so that's something we haven't finished yet but it will be difficult. If you see here uh, all those data, po uh, data points and uh, routes combining uh, and overlapping uh, we need to investigate the ways and technology and algorithms which extract the right data in the right time and the right way. Um, the future of the project um, in March, there is a CDSDK workshop in Manchester where we will talk with all the participating cities to how to import data in our system and to use our API. Um, the cities of Helsinki and Istanbul will uh, start using our mobility app and API in the summer, so we will help them with their data, getting them into the, 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 the SDK. Um, and another very big thing, of course, we will enrich OpenStreetMap, and of course we can get the data back into OpenStreetMap. Uh, so we need to investigate that, maybe find algorithms and systems to get useful information that we have, but OpenStreetMap does not have, and get that back to the OpenStreetMap system. Um, so we need a discussion with OpenStreetMap, and we need developers to use and test our API. And of course, the more data sets that are in our system, the better. And I think that was about it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> questions? I'm sure there are as many of them. So you said you're developing a few applications already on top of the API. But yeah. is the API currently available to developers? Mm -hmm. you Not yet, no. Um, and I don't think it will be available for users before the summer. Uh, it will first be tested uh, in the cities and in the participating uh, uh, organizations in the project. Um, the plan is to have the first beta version ready <coughs> summer April and then the first beta version of the app should be ready too and after that yes we'll go forth and make it available for the rest of the world. 
sort of the beginning, there are three areas that you're focusing on, <coughs> and the web society, I guess, is focusing on mobility. Exactly. Um, were there partners who wanted to do anything on uh, energy, energy consumption, uh, green behaviors, that sort of thing? That's a huge part of yeah. the smart cities initiatives. Yeah. That's what pays for everything, or at least that's the excuse for doing some of these projects. Because yeah. supposedly the cities are going to save money on, you know, bus kilometers or on uh, heating and cooling. Yeah. Well, uh, not directly. No, those are the three pillars of this project. Uh, but we do hope that, um, uh, well, at least at the Life Society, we hope that our mobility API will be maybe the end, we'll be able to use that for those things because we don't plan to use only for mobility. If, if somebody wants to to add data about certain bus tracks that say it's a green bus or it's a solar energy bus, whatever, yeah, why not? Those data sets can be added. So it, it's not about that uh, uh, now, but we hope that we make a system good enough and uh, abstract enough that later, yes, those data sets could be added. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that the other, uh, in Helsinki and uh, uh, Lisbon, where they do in the other two areas, that they're thinking more wider than the, the, their uh, area. <coughs> Anything else? Come on. No? Are you worried about edits for OpenStreetMap? Major edits for OpenStreetMap. Uh, for example, upgrading a single line of the street into all the all lanes. Mm -hmm. Is that a problem with this approach? Um, no, but we uh, uh, we have to still make this, the system go pretty. We are, we're now importing complete opposite map graphs, but we uh, did not yet develop the system that uh, is capable of coping with, with uh, updates. So we have to think of something that does that in a good way. Uh, but, uh, this is the first project that I'm doing with opposite map, so I really need to talk to more people that know more about it than I do, uh, especially for those things, because I don't really know what kind of updates are normal or what kind of things are happening with the data, so I need to know how I can incorporate those updates in the data that I've already mapped on something else that yeah. wasn't there anymore. The standard thing when you have a, a, an external database track what's happening over OpenStreetMap is mm -hmm. the IDs yeah. are changing over OpenStreetMap, but then you're talking about an ID that maybe no longer exists. Exactly. But there's no success <coughs> mechanism. Yeah. So and you never know what the new IDs are that it's all about the base. What you, do, um, what, what, what you do in that case is use what's called a fuzzy match, where yeah. you use the, the approximate location of exactly. what I was to find if there's something similar. And we are already back. making those algorithms, so I'm sure there will be ways to, to do that. But no, that, that will be a major uh, issue, which we haven't really addressed. Or we thought of, of course, that we have to we still do it. Um, not yet, but I will be happy to talk with all of you about it and how I should do it, because I don't know myself either. Um, is that it? <laughs>